Hey, this story is just one part of the Stories with Sapphire podcast. If you want to hear the full episode in its intended context, the link is in the description below. It's story time. Chapter 1. Don't act like you're asleep. I know you're awake. Okay. Hello? Hello, Sapphire? Hi! Hey! This is Lancer Howard, a writer, screenwriter, and producer who reached out to me on social media after listening to my podcast. Lancer has had a lifetime of paranormal encounters. You know, I think it's one of those things where some people are just in tune. It's almost like a frequency that you have the ability to tune into. And for whatever reason, it's followed me my whole life. One thing Lancer had always been able to do is enter a location and sense if something grievous had happened there. We'll, we'll be in a place that, you know, could be a restaurant or a bar, and I'll just ask someone because I'll feel this heaviness, and I'll just say, did something happen here? I, that spot over there, and oftentimes people would just, like, turn white as a ghost, and they would you know, tell me some type of a story or how someone died there or how a certain situation happened in the place that I was at. It's kind of a gift or a curse, however you want to look at it. This ability to see what others couldn't had actually started even earlier when Lancer was an infant. But my mother didn't tell me till later in life this kind of scary story. She said, as a child, as an infant, you were very different because every night you would just scream at the top of your lungs in your crib and you would be staring at something. And we didn't know if you had some kind of a disability or whatever, but it would happen like on the hour every night to the point where my mom would just stay up at night until this episode would happen. And then I would calm down and she'd go to bed. And she said it was, it was kind of frightening because the look on your face, it was like someone was standing over you or looking at you or trying to engage you. It was not like you were just crying with your eyes closed. You were staring at something. Lancer's mother never shared that story with him until much later in life. Because at the time, although they found it perplexing, they didn't consider it paranormal. And that skepticism remained present as Lancer grew older and his sensitivity was completely disregarded. You know, my parents didn't believe me and they really thought that there was something wrong with me because I couldn't sleep at night and I'd have, you know, these dreams and nightmares of where I'd wake up. And my sister was the only supportive person and it wasn't until she kind of experienced what I had been telling my parents about for years that she was a believer. My sister and I, you know, like a lot of probably curious teenagers, we got a Ouija board and we used it a couple times and, you know, had some difficult to explain experiences. But then one time we did it, we got my grandfather who had passed away a couple years earlier. This was Lancer's paternal grandfather who he had never met before. Afterwards, after our session, every night, like literally every night, I would hear, you know, in my bedroom when I go to sleep, I'd hear walking on the carpet and it would stop over my bed. Hearing footsteps and feeling like you're being watched are actually common signs of carbon monoxide poisoning. There was a famous case from 1921 where a whole family thought their home was haunted. But once the faulty furnace was fixed, the activity stopped. But these sounds were only affecting Lancer, no one else in the house. But we had a small dog. And, you know, I believe that animals can sense these things. And, and my sister and I would test her reaction. The dog, for some reason, would not want to sleep in my room and, and to the point where, you know, I would sleep with my door closed, but the dog would scratch the paint off the door in wanting to get out. And you know how dogs kind of move quickly 
and turn when they see things. And the dog would do that when I would hear this walking and we'd put it in my sister's room and she'd drop her head and go right to sleep and relax. But in my room, she would never relax. And every night she couldn't sleep with me because she was terrified to be in my room for whatever reason. (laughs) Yeah, it was really unsettling. And that's kind of the beginning of me not being able to sleep. And then I would have, well, maybe not every night, but frequently I would have dreams about my grandfather and they would be really vivid things like him talking to me, and this was a man that I never met. After months of footsteps and vivid dreams and only having his sister to console him, Lancer was finally able to convince his parents that what was happening to him was something that was calling their attention. You know, I played Little League Baseball, so we came home from one of my games one night, and I'll never forget this. It was kind of dark, and we all walked in the house and we heard music coming from upstairs. And, and my mom said, hey, you know, Lancer, Nikki, you left your radio on, go shut it off. And, you know, just recklessly, I ran up the stairs and I ran to my room and it was dark. And I remember I froze because the music wasn't coming from my room. It was coming from my grandfather's den and his old radio had turned on and it was playing this old, like 20s music. And I remember the beam of light from, you know, this old leather cased radio that was the only thing. It was like it was like a laser that lit up the whole room. And I just froze. And my sister and I, because she came up later too, and she just screamed and grabbed me and we ran down the stairs and we tried to explain it to my mom and dad. And my dad, he just laughed because that's ridiculous. There's no way that radio of his doesn't even have batteries in it, which it didn't. To randomly hear music might be the result of musical ear syndrome, usually experienced by those with hearing loss. As your ears bring in less auditory signals to your brain, your brain begins to fill in the blanks, so to speak, with music. But Lancer wasn't experiencing hearing loss, nor was his sister, nor anyone else in the family. The sound wasn't coming from nowhere. It was coming from the radio. I mean, my father didn't tell me this till later because he was a non-believer, but he literally took it down to an electronic supply store that works on old radios. And he showed the guy the radio and the guy laughed and he said, there's no way this could possibly turn on. And if it did, it couldn't play music. You would just hear static. But at that point, my parents were kind of like, okay, maybe, maybe Lancer isn't crazy. You know, I believe it has something to do with electricity and energy. And I know this from my ability to sense spirits. There's almost like a frequency and the analogy I I like to use, it's like when you turn on a radio or there's a lot of sound, you feel a pressure in the room that you can almost cut with a knife. And energy can only be translated like that through something that was a vessel to actually make the sound so so i believe that somehow his energy was so strong in that room that it somehow turned on that radio and it was his favorite radio and i guess you know again it It's funny, non-believer people, when things happen, they'll never tell you really what the backstory is. In this case, for me, it was the radio and and my father and his relationship to that radio. And then he told me years later, not at the time, that it was the only thing that my dad and him had in common is they had a love for music and they would listen to that radio. As a child, he said, that was one of the few good memories I had with my father, was listening to music and jazz. That made me know for sure that, you know, the dreams, the radio, the connection, it's him. It seems like a sweet gesture for Lancer's grandfather to remind his dad of the happy memories they shared together in an otherwise tumultuous relationship. To me... It feels like it had to have been his grandfather. But I had to wonder if that was the only spirit he and his sister communicated with the night they used the Ouija board. I understand that sometimes spirits mimic those of loved ones. And so that is the 
question if it really was him or was it another more sinister spirit because later then the terror began i mean already it was unsettling you know every night having to hear the walking and that's a, that's a great question sapphire i mean it, it could have been and, and to this day i don't know so all these things were happening and I, you know i was very uh scared by the walking and not being able to sleep and everybody thinking i'm crazy so my sister and i decided okay we're going to try to contact my grandfather and ask him if he would go away because he's scaring me and we actually did do that and connected with him what was really bizarre was you know and this is where i think we made a mistake my sister and i kept going and we had the kind of the ignorance that okay it's almost like turning a channel okay that story's over so let's start again and oh man that's where things got <laughs> pretty crazy so we did it again and we got i remember the guy's name it was a, a spirit by the name of sam which you know that nondescript whatever and it just had a really really bad feeling and my sister and i both we would never try to fool the other person especially doing something as serious as a Ouija board and she literally just started screaming and like ran out of the room and just i you know i ran after her. i said nikki nikki what's wrong what you know what the hell happened here in the room we were doing it my father had a deer's head she said i swear to god the eyes were lit up red and i said what are you talking about you know and and she was completely shaken up and then the next day i remember we were you know just doing our thing and my mother i heard my mother just scream and my dad ran upstairs we ran up there like what the hell's going on here actually in their master bedroom in their closet there's that you know that heavy kind of it's almost like a ceiling tile that's like 20 or 30 pounds that you can lift up to go into the attic and the piece was lifted up and moved on its side it was like sitting sitting up and it would take quite a lot of weight and strength to lift this thing up so everybody's sort of confused here and then a couple days later I'm sleeping but you're in that state where you think you're awake but you're asleep and you know so the reality to me was i was awake and i i vividly i you know and i've had this is what makes it unique is i've had this very dream three times later at different points in my life and basically what happens is i hear like a whispering like it starts as a whispering like you know someone trying to talk to me and i can't make it out I can hear the voice it's almost like it comes into a uh, tune and it's an old woman saying I know you're awake don't act like you're asleep and she keeps repeating that and then there's like a blood curdling cackling like laughing I'm like what the hell and cuz it's it's one of those things like especially when you're a kid when you're afraid especially if you feel like something's in the room you at least I did. I acted like I was asleep because I thought it would go away. I know you're awake. Don't act like you're asleep. I would I I know I was awake. I I mean, it's one of those things where I've debated this with many different people and the next time I had that dream, it was probably about gosh, it was early adulthood. So I it went from at at the age it happened, I was probably about 12, 13, and then the next time I had the very same dream was in my early 20s. And then I had the dream again which was kind of interesting it was right before my father died which was about 4 years ago and the last time it happened it felt like the bed was like shaking so what woke me up from my sleep was the shaking of the bed and then it was like I know you're awake don't act like you're asleep I know you're awake and then the laughter and uh it's just uh, it's as you could tell it's tormented me to this day cuz I, I i know it it happened auditory hallucinations are common in people with schizophrenia bipolar disorder or disassociative disorder even extreme stress can cause them as well it's possible that sam's voice 
was a result of Lancer's lack of sleep or the grieving of his father. But that doesn't seem to explain the glowing red eyes of the deer head or the attic being opened or the bed shaking him awake. It feels like there's something else going on here. I asked Lancer if he's tried to communicate with Sam since. No, I and I would be terrified to, to be honest with you, I have so much reverence and respect for the Ouija board and the possibility of something bad happening, I don't even want to mess with, especially given what I had to go through as a kid. I don't, I don't ever want to go back to that place because, you know, a lot of people don't understand how terrible it is when you have like some type of a presence in your house and you literally, it just wrecks shop on your life. And, and I don't want to even mess around with welcoming in him or anyone else. From disembodied footsteps to mysterious music to menacing whispers, Lancer has had a variety of paranormal auditory ordeals. But sometimes, it's the lack of sound that can be just as distressing. This is what inspired his book, The Screaming Silence. It's a dark book of poetry, and and really, I'm hoping to kind of help people deal with loss. The poem that the book is titled after was inspired by one of his vivid dreams. At the time, I lived in this old house, and there there were these high beam ceilings, and yeah, I mean, it was completely hardwood floors, so it creaked and made all these weird noises. And I had this dream. I was hearing this creaking coming from the living room, and it was like this steady, like a rocking chair, creak back and forth, like the weight of something. And I wake up and I walk out and I remember a person hanging from a noose and just swinging in the moonlight. And uh, it really stuck with me. And that's where I came up with the term uh, swinging from the gallows of silence. Anyone that has lost a loved one, the hardest part is the silence. The silence is almost like screaming at you, especially if it's someone close, because now you're alone. One of my artistic idols, James Picard, he's a painter. He did the foreword and he did my cover art, and he is obsessed with darkness and dark paintings, And but he wants people to confront pain and darkness because it's a great growing opportunity. And, and he kind of inspired me to do the book because at first I'm like, nobody's going to want to read this. This is too heavy. It's too dark. And he's like, no, Lancer, you got to do it, man. That's, you know, that was my reason for doing my exhibits. You know, I need more people on my side. The darkness can be the light. And I said, I love that. It can be. Sometimes the greatest things come from pain. For more information on Lancer's book of poems, visit the link in the show notes or visit storieswithsapphire.com. Thank you for joining me today. If you like what you heard and would like to support this independently run show, consider becoming a member of my Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash storieswithsapphire to see the different tiers and perks. If you'd like to submit a story, email me at storieswithsapphire at gmail.com. Salamat and good night. Mm-hmm.